Before uh, 2018, the United Party government, the federal government is in power. Oh, good afternoon, President. Knowing that they have authority over yeah. this building, yeah, and months, they uh, wanted to put the constitution in a budget. They used their colonial talk. And Minister of Finance. They appeared before the board. The previous government then decided. The that the legislator will put their approval right in one act and give it to the executive. Uh, thanks for joining us. If for some reason we in the temptability, yeah, otherwise, I think I was in the No, 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 Borrowing by any means in the national budget. If you read the revised and amended PSL law of 2019, section 36 of the PSL law, it's clear if you go to section 36, two, it says loan may be raised upon such term and condition to, as to interest, refill or otherwise as may be negotiated by the minister or all. Is or her representative board only for the purpose of financing budget deficit, treasury and monetary policy management, obtaining foreign currency, or lending to approve an institution or otherwise deferring expenditure which may lawfully be deferred. Three says, with the exception of any loan rate for the purpose of paragraph B of subsection 36 2, paragraph B of subsection 36 2 says, Treasury and monetary policy. They say, sometimes you can tell too, they say the term condition of any loan shall be laid before the legislature and shall not come into operation unless they have been approved by a resolution of the legislature. Mr. Speaker, the PF law is definite. There is no law that supersedes the constitution of the law. So again, we are asking, let them give their reliance. By which law? Information. Speaker. Information sustained. Information on the Williams. My information here is that your cross examination to the witness clearly justified that LPRS, the Ministry of Finance, has not received any money from the bank. That process has not been consummated. Secondly, the provision my colleague just read did not presuppose that no government entity can engage into the negotiation with prior authorization by the legislature. So the information here is that then, based on the testimony and your cross-examination, nothing has happened. The fact that no money has been disbursed. They are saying the process, and for me, I believe we need to rest when they, when they should have negotiated consistent with provision of the PFL law. Oh, no, 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 that the, the constitution is saying before any government agency goes into negotiation, they will come for authorization. So the process has not ended. Hence, I see no reason why the FPRC has followed any constitutional provision because the negotiation and the process are yes. still on and can be go off. And that's the information that we have. Information denied. The NDE in its identification of Ahmed in the testimony has made no indication that there is any attempt to come before the legislature of this matter unless we have called you. Information. So, um, information, Honorable. Everybody will count information. Yes. Honorable Safoko. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. So my information here, Honorable Speaker, Deputy Speaker, fellow police. So Honorable Speaker, my information here, it has to do with uh, Section 41 of what? Of 
the PFM law. They have they reversed the PFM law of 2009. To be very, 2019, sorry. They reversed the PFM law. So, our speaker, in keeping with that, our brother, I mean, the uh, managing director stated that he went to do another arrangement that has to do with the reduction of the interest at Echo Bank. So my question here, I mean, my information has to do with consistent with, uh, consistent with section 41.1 of the PFM law, was the loan included in the 2024 draft budget? All right, so folks, if you just join us, my name is Prince of Good Days is Focus on Library TV. It's not central government borrowing. The law, the law is clear about when SOEs, state owned enterprise, the provision is there. Before the contract knows, the processes they need to pass through, and they were exhausted. Okay, uh, as you say, you say on one, you say the uh, 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 so I ask the Minister of Finance to make comment because we have various versions or sections of the PFM law being quoted, which will, will, will initiate further investigation before we can pass judgment. But I'm glad, as of yet, according to the Minister's testimony, nothing has been done and no funds have been withdrawn for that purpose. So, uh, Mr. Minister of Finance? No, 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 Mr. Minister, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Minister, were you consulted and did you give approval or sign any document that gave aid and comfort to the loan in question? Oh, Mr. Speaker, the Deputy Speaker, Honorable Members, the 55th House of Representatives, um, they have promised by saying. Issues regarding how there are controls in place regarding the borrowing by state owned enterprises before this administration predates as far back as President Selly's administration. It's important to underscore that the debt management structure has been in place, reviewing and making sure that any SOE that is a state owned enterprise seeking to do any form of borrowing, it goes through that structure. And the basis for that is section 39, count two, government's guarantees of the Public Financial Management Act, revised for 2019. All contracts that contain commitments involving contingent financial liabilities, of the government or state-owned enterprises must be approved by the minister and the debt management committee. Contingent financial liabilities include but are not limited to any guarantee of performance or payments obligation of another person and an agreement including indemnification agreement to hold another person harmless or to provide insurance or similar protection against risk or loss, and any guarantee of economic return or another person, including any guarantee of profit, in which case the LPRC holds true. And this is the provision, and I wish to state Section 35, Count 1 of the revised 2019 PFM Act states. Subject to the limits of authority granted by the legislature as provided for under Article 34 D, Count IIR, of the Constitution of Liberia, at the time of approval of the national budget or at any other time in a fiscal year, the minister is solely responsible for overseeing government's borrowing, including 
borrowing in accordance with specific regulations issued under this Act. And this includes domestic and foreign borrowing as well as concessional and commercial borrowing and short-term liquidity related to borrowing, in which case the LPRC holds true. So it's just to say, Mr. Speaker, Deputy Speaker, honorable members of this House, um, that this structure has been there. The reason why LPRC had to come to the debt management structure uh, committee because it's for record keeping to make sure that all forms, because at the end of the day, in any case of a default, it becomes a government's liability. And on this note, Mr. Pre uh, Mr. Speaker, I rest. Okay, Mr. Minister, um, I listened to that. Um, with all my years of experience in constitutional and statutory interpretation and drafting, and I will tell you that if that is what you people are relying on, I'm totally discredited. Nothing in what you say, when, when, let's get it clear, when the legislature, by virtue of the constitution, delegates any of this power, it must specifically do so. It's case law. Nothing you read say the legislature was delegating power. In fact, you say subject to legislative limitations in Article 34 D. Because the legislature set up a structure in which the executive guides, negotiates, and implements and guarantees loan, does not, in my mind, without more, divest the legislature of its 34 D powers. And that is what I'm looking for, and that is what I can find. Information, Mr. Speaker. Information. Mr. Speaker. Information, Honorable Taylor. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, in line with Article 34, I I I to I with the, with the Minister of Finance. When I refer to Article 34 d of the Constitution, it reads, it says that no loan shall be raised by the government on behalf of the Republic, on, the, on, the, on behalf of the Republic, or guarantee given for any public institution or authority otherwise than by or under the authority of a legislative enactment. And I see here that the BFM law has become a legislative enactment and gave power to the ministry to guarantee loans and take on liability, financial liabilities on behalf of governments. So in this case, I find it I find it in line that you need that information. I find it Information, <laughs> 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 Focus on Liberia. We are here in the chambers of the house. Minister of Finance is here. He and his deputies, then the managing director of the LPRC, is here to give clarity on loan negotiation by the LPRC that is been approved by the minister or the minister of finance.
Minister Kamara, welcome to the legislative press. You appear to the plenary today. Just tell us in brief how did it go today? Well, I think you saw what happened in there. And <laughs> for now, we just believe in serving God and then serving our country. Do, do you see any outcome in terms mm -hmm. of how we exercise our function? Do you see any conflict in the law, the constitution, and that of the PFN law that, that was continually being quoted? Well, we will leave that now in the context of what has been. And the final outcome of today's decision. What do you think is uh, the outcome of the loan will be? Sir? What do you think the outcome of the loan will be? Minister Boyma uh, Kamara now is uh, trying to leave the uh, legislature. He's about to get into the lift. So, thanks for following. Uh, my name is Prince. This is our call your day. Bye bye.